Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for today's EACTA ICU webinar, Can We Avoid ECMO in the Management of Postcardiotomy Shock? And my name is uh, Dr. Philippe Godard. I am uh, the head of uh, the cardiothoracic ICU department uh, at the Montpellier University Hospital in France. And uh, I am also the chair of the ICU uh, EACTA subspeciality committee. So I'm pleased to introduce the two moderators of that uh, webinar. First is Dr. Peter Russell from uh, Brussels, Belgium. He is an uh, EACTA ICU committee member. He is also a cardiac anesthesiologist and intensivist at the Flemish University Hospital of Brussels with a special assignment as a head of the transformation program of the cardiological care plane and clinical coordination of intensive care. He has a special interest in cardiac anesthesia, intensive care, patient blood management, TE, data registration and quality assessment and improvement, teamwork, anesthesia overseas, and so on. He is a past IACTA, a president of IACTA, and served as a, a representative council member and board member for 16 years. Uh, he was an affiliated member at the ACA from uh, 2014 to 2016. He is a member in the SCA and the ESICMA Dutch Association for Anesthesiology. Um, he has more than 50 publications and book chapters. The second moderator is uh, Dr. Daniela Passero. And she is uh, from uh, Turin, Italy, and she's working as a staff anesthesiologist of cardiac intensive care unit in the Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care Medicine at the Cita della Salute e della Scienza Hospital in Turin. Her main activities and responsibilities include organization of clinical activity of cardiac intensive care unit, infection monitoring role also. She has a clinical research activity on postoperative pulmonary complication and pulmonary hypertension in cardiac surgery, critically ill patients with sepsis and acute kidney injury, lab research on septic model and transitional research in septic patients and cell culture, organ procurement activity and protective ventilation in lung donors. She is a member of the ACTA Representative Council and the ICU and the VAD and Transplant Committees. So now, please, Peter, come to introduce the webinar and the objectives. The microphone is yours, Peter. Thank you very much, uh, Philip, for this uh, very nice introduction. I'm really excited for this uh, webinar which uh, <clears throat> I hope you will be very happy with the end. Um, uh, let me shortly introduce you to the objectives of this, this webinar, actually, uh, at the end of uh, which you should uh, understand the current evidence and, and the best practices, how to use uh, mechanical circulatory support after post cardiogenic cardiogenic shock, as well as to avoid it. Um, so uh, we will, uh, oh, you will get a better understanding of the indications and contraindications as well as the different types uh, of uh, using ECMO and related devices in the treatment of post cardiogenic shock. Um, as well, you should understand how can we avoid and how we could use uh, balloon pump, anotropes and vasoporters in order to have the best treatment for these patients. Uh, we will address as well the use of uh, additional forms of uh, cardiac assist, temporary cardiac assist like ventricular assist devices, and as well um, you will have a, a better understanding of how TE should be used in order to help uh, the introduction as well as the proper functioning of this particular treatment. So I hope you were excited as I am about uh, what's coming up. Uh, just to make sure that you use this webinar appropriately, 
so we will address questions after each of the presentations. So please, if you have any questions, type them into your chat box and we will bring them up during the presentation and uh, we will uh, handle them and try to have some time for questions as well at the end. I'm pleased to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Alexander Watara. He's a professor of anesthesia and critical care at the University of Bordeaux. His actual uh, clinical basic research interests include the perioperative management of cardiac uh, surgical patients, circulatory support of organs, transfusion, and hemostasis. He's responsible for the anesthesia residency training program at the University of Bordeaux. He's active in educational initiatives, particularly those related to perioperative transesophageal cardiopulmonary bypass. Is a further is author or and co-author of more than 100 scientific papers. So uh, to highlight credibility and expertise on these fields, I will introduce a talk that is on the use of temporary BAD for post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock. Please, Alexander. Yeah. yeah. ICU committee for giving me the opportunity to speak with you about the use of short-term particular assist device to treat the patient with a post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock. Regarding my conflict of interest, I received some uh, consulting things from uh, Acumet. Pathophysiology of post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock is it involves uh, definitely ischemia, reperfusion, injury responsible for staining or less frequently a well myocardial uh, infarction. In addition, systemic inflammatory response as well as pre exiting uh, ventricular dysfunction um, can be uh, involved. Several previous works identify risk uh, factors for post cardiogenic shock and patient related factors could be identified as uh, age or low uh, ejection fraction or diabetics or again uh, chronic kidney disease. Also surgery related risk factor were uh, identified has uh, on pump uh, surgery and the duration of uh, cardiopulmonary uh, uh, bypass. The uh, clinical implication of this uh, finding is that uh, post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock must be expected for complex surgery or for high risk patient. But sometimes unexpected uh, in case of uh, technical difficulties uh, may be uh, occurs. We have eliminated the uh, uh, surgical correctable problem and finally uh, and for uh, recovery um, may be possible and uh, prolonged mechanical secretary support must be, uh, may be uh, necessary. We estimate that uh, one post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock over 10 will uh, become uh, rapidly refractory to inotropic drugs. Considering that cardiogenic shock occurs in four or five or 10 percent of uh, cardiac surgical patients, the prevalence of this uh, fractory post cardiogenic shock has been estimated between uh, 0.5 to 1.5 percent of cardiac surgical patients. In this patient, VA ECMO, sometimes associated to RABP, is the most widely used temporary support. Is a peer a cell death therapy with many advantages, is simple to manage, is easily suitable by a percutaneous uh, way, 
It uh, restores rapidly and organ perfusion. It can offer uh, B ventricular support left and right by shunting both ventricles. It can also provide support by presence of membrane oxygenator and it can uh, be implanted by uh, peripheral or central way. Simultaneous uh, renal replacement therapy can be used during uh, the ECMO and finally the ECMO is not so uh, extensive. Because the chest is open, the, the ECMO uh, may be uh, central with different Sub-xiphoid uh, uh, or mini thoracotomy. However, the ECMO increase has, has uh, sorry disadvantage. The ECMO increase uh, left ventricle loading condition pre and after load. The ECMO increase uh, left ventricle wall stress and through uh, myocardial oxygen demand and the VE ECMO could be could decrease uh, coronary blood flow. All these uh, changes increase the risk of left ventricular thrombosis formation, increase the risk of endocardial ischemia and the risk of pulmonary edema, which is which are uh, related to uh, poor outcome. All this. Changes uh, can impair the potential myocardial and finally ECMO because this is a complex secret, limit the rehabilitation of the patient. Extubation can be possible but mobilization still more difficult in this uh, patient. Here we can see the relationship between the uh, left ventricle dilation and the uh, myocardial recovery and the risk of uh, transition long-term ventricle assist device. And you can see more than left ventricle dilation exists, less that you can uh, expect to have a myocardial uh, recovery uh, more than you can uh, uh, need a long-term uh, left ventricular assist uh, divide. All this concern may, may sorry, uh, probably explain the uh, poor outcome of ECMO in post cardiotomy uh, cardiogenic shock. This large-scale uh, study analyzed a large number of patients, 517 patients, who uh, were treated by VA ECMO for refractory post-cardiotomy cardiogenic shock. The central configuration was uh, um, used in 61% of the patient, and um, more than uh, half of patients uh, need for re-exploration for excessive bleeding. And in this study, uh, more than 60% uh, of the patients could be weaned from uh, the ECMO, but uh, be careful, uh, half of the patient did not survive after 20 hours. The duration of the support was uh, more than three uh, days. And um, as you can see here, the in-hospital and one-year mortality was very high. It was respectively uh, 75% and 93%. On the other hand, the uh, ventricular assist device like impeller by unloading the uh, cardiac cavities uh, decrease in uh, myocardial work. Three kinds of ventricular assist device may be used for uh, treating uh, post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock. The first one is uh, Centrinae uh, ventricular assist uh, system. 
is, second one is Impella Divine, and the first one is uh, Tandem Art. The ventrumeic, uh, centrumeic uh, ventricular assist system is a uh, continue uh, flow uh, centrifugal blood pump uh, electromagnetic uh, control by levitation. This concept uh, minimizes friction and chair stress, and the device can provide up to uh, can provide up to uh, 10 liters by uh, minute and uh, may be used up to 30 days. Usually central cannulation is uh, performed for this uh, device and by this way the inflow cannula is inserted in the right or in the left atrium and the flow uh, outflow cannula uh, is inserted in the ascending aorta Artery, uh, artery, depending the uh, site, the site of uh, assist divide. The uh, Impera catheter is uh, developed by Abiomed Company. is a micro axial pump uh, inducing efficient unloading of uh, cardiac cavity. The speed of the pump is very high; is around uh, thirty thousand. A minute to uh, 50,000 and can explain uh, possible uh, hemolysis. The pump uh, may be uh, answered percutaneously or surgically, depending on the model of you, uh, of you can use. Here, this is a summarize of the Impella family. The 2.5 and uh, 5.0 model. Uh, the sorry, the 2.5 CP and uh, 5.0 models can generate respect, respect, respectively uh, 2.5, 3.5, and uh, 5 liters per uh, minute of uh, pump blood flow. The 2.5 and uh, CP or 3.5 can be uh, inserted percutaneously and the uh, this model, the model, the 5.0 model, must be inserted by the surgeon or, or axillary uh, ray. Finally, the, the last model of Impella family is uh, Impella RP. And this is for right heart failure. This model can provide up to uh, four uh, liters per uh, minute of blood uh, flow and can be uh, answered per cutaneous sleep. All these devices uh, can be used up to uh, 14 days, but uh, many authors could report uh, use. The uh, main counter indication of left impella model a uh, mechanical uh, aortic valve or previous significant aortic regurgitation, usually more than two, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or uh, ventricular thrombosis. All these ventricular assist device are tied and they propose a selective ventricular support and not a global support like uh, ECMO. Prolong circulatory support with uh, less blood cell trauma, and uh, this uh, ventricular assist device are simple circuit without membrane oxygenation. But if uh, oxygenation is required, we can add uh, on the circuit. And because the circuit is simple, the patient can be easily extubate, extubated and uh, mobilize. This concept of uh, selective ventricular support uh, RP to be uh, clinical relevant. Indeed, most of the patients, around 60 or 65 patients in this study, presenting post cardiotomic cardiogenic shock may only left ventricular assist device. And 26 patients, only 26 patients required right 
uh, ventricular axis divide, and only 10% of the patient who develop post-cardiotomy cardiogenic shock required uh, B, uh, B by uh, ventricular axis divide. This recent paper published in 2018 compared retrospectively two strategies to treat the post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock. And they compare uh, ventricular assist device for 24 patients and the ECMO, a global approach for 32 uh, patients. The primary outcome of this study was survival to the device explantation or upgrade to another strategy. It was a long term ventricular assist. Firstly, we can observe that most of the patients, 70% of the patients, receive only left ventricular acid divide is a group uh, uh, treated by ventricular acid divide. This uh, finding confirmed previous uh, result that uh, most of patients can be treated by only left ventricular acid divide. The duration of the uh, circulatory support was one week and uh, less uh, patient regarding the primary outcome, less patient treated by ECMO uh, could be weaned from uh, the device who were alive uh, um, when, uh, when alive. So. And finally, the uh, rate of complication uh, less frequent in the uh, ventricular assist divide group. Concerning the long-term mortality, it was uh, these uh, uh, parameters were clearly uh, lower in the uh, ventricular assist divide uh, group. Because this kind of uh, ventricular assist device uh, by uh, Santimag uh, uh, requires sternotomy and cardiac surgery for uh, central cannulation, the feasibility of uh, smaller ventricular assist device like uh, Impella have been uh, investigated. This paper evaluates the feasibility and the same of Impella uh, LL, LL, LD, sorry, LD. This is LD is for uh, left direct. So this uh, catheter is directly inserted in the outer part of surgeon. And this paper evaluates uh, the feasibility of this approach for uh, 24 patients who present refractory post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock defined by the inability, inability for winning from uh, CPB. The uh, authors uh, report uh, no uh, technical uh, difficulties, but dedicate uh, insertion for the patient with uh, qualified uh, aortic valve. So sternal closure could be performed in 50% uh, of the patient. The pump has around uh, 3.5 liters per uh, minute and uh, interesting uh, the successful winning from the divide was uh, more than 60%, it was 63%. The other study was um, observation, observational study evaluating the hemodynamic effect of Impella again LD model is a post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock. Again, the uh, insertion was successful in all patients and the pump blood flow was 4 liters per minute. It should be pointed out that uh, Impella in this paper could be inserted by peripheral uh, approach in some patients. In this patient, the author could observe an increase of an improvement of hemodynamic parameters, an increase in mean, an increase of cardiac uh, index, 
Regarding the need of inotropic growth, we can observe a decrease rapidly of uh, the need for uh, inotropic growth. To our knowledge, one of the last papers reporting the, reporting the use of impella to treat the post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock in this paper published by a French group uh, in uh, 2019. This paper evaluates uh, the uh, outcome of uh, 29 uh, patients with uh, post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock. Again, most of the patients uh, could uh, treat by only left ventricular assist device, and the impella was inserted mostly through uh, femoral of axillary artery. Successful winning was than uh, 17% of the patient. And finally, probably the most important result is uh, survival rate up to uh, 50% and clearly better than previous result uh, in this uh, high risk patient. If short term assist device seems to work very well, with that form, uh, with that form, right ventricle assist device is not so good for centrimag model. This paper comparing right ventricle assist device in different clinical contexts report a significant lower survival rate of in of patient with uh, post cardiotomy uh, cardiogenic shock in comparison with patient who underrate. Uh, at transplantation, left, uh, uh, left uh, ventricle assist device implantation uh, and develop right uh, heart failure. The right heart failure treatment in patients suffering from uh, post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock seems to be better with uh, the use of Impella LP. In this study, Pulling uh, three uh, studies, pulling the data of three studies, and including uh, six. This uh, this uh, sixty patients were divided uh, in two groups. So group A was uh, uh, was the patient where the patient was a patient who developed a right heart failure after LVAD implantation. And the group B was uh, the patient who developed right heart failure after post cardiotomy or from uh, medical cause, it was a uh, neurocardial affection. All the patients were uh, assisted by impeller, and the primary outcome was a survival 30 days after device explant or at hospital discharge or the need for other strategy, for example, uh, long-term uh, left ventricular assist device. device. This patient could uh, observe uh, a decrease of uh, CPB, an increase of cardiac and again, a decrease of the need for inotropic drugs. Regarding the primary outcome, which was a uh, survival rate at 30 days or at uh, hospital discharge of the need for other strategy, you can see that uh, more than 70% uh, of the patients were alive at 30 days or at uh, hospital discharge. We could observe that most of the patients presenting post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock could be treated by a left ventricular assist device. But, however, in, if uh, B uh, ventricular support is required, some authors report the possibility to use a left and right impella. This treatment, if it exists, uh, seems to be 
difficult, but uh, still possible. I think in this case, ECMO appears to be uh, easier. To conclude, ECMO is still efficient mechanical circulatory support. However, it's uh, the, the outcomes of the patient presenting post-cardiotomy cardiogenic shock and treat with ECMO remain. This bad result may be related to complication and or intracardiac hemodynamic uh, effects because uh, post-cardiogenic shock, post-cardiotomic cardiogenic shock could be treated by selective ventricular assist device, left or right. This device should be preferred. Outcomes, uh, of this patient treated by this approach some to be better in comparison with the uh, ECMO strategy. However, in case of B ventricular dysfunction, ECMO approach remains the mechanical circulatory support of choose. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Alexander, for your excellent presentation. So now we will see if there are some questions, some questions as our time. My major concern is uh, still about the uh, cost. Uh, therefore, would like the first, I would like to ask you the first question. Would you recommend the primary insertion of LVAD or RVAD over VA ECMO, and if so, how and when do you choose between uh, both uh, devices or options? Mm -hmm. Thank you for this question. It's a not easy question. Uh, as I can show you, uh, and as the previous uh, speaker show us, uh, the outcome of patient treated by uh, VA ECMO are uh, very bad, between 20 and 25 percent of mortality. And we could observe that uh, uh, with a new strategy, uh, for example, impeller left or right, we can observe a better outcome. So, and from the study, we could observe that uh, patient with uh, post cardiotomic cardiogenic shock can be treated by only uh, one side. Uh, device. So ECMO clearly is efficient for restore the reperfusion, perfusion of the organ. It's fine for uh, respiratory support, but uh, when we can uh, observe uh, only left or right uh, ventricular failure, perhaps we, we can uh, propose a selective uh, device. But clearly, when we have a uh, uh, B ventricular uh, failure, uh, ECMO, V, ECMO is uh, the best shoes. Okay, thank you. Can the surgeon insert the impella cannula intraoperatively without the use of its ray guidance? You have a experience about that. Sorry? Can uh, the surgeon insert the impella cannula intraoperatively without the use of X-ray guidance? You know that you need uh, the guidance of uh, X-ray to introduce uh, the impella cannula. Yes, so we can use room. You can you, you can do that without X-ray. Do, do you have experience about that? We can use uh, TEE, for example, uh, to insert and uh, uh, check the right position of uh, impella uh, in the left side uh, as well in the right side. So, uh, because uh, uh, probably the patient will be uh, has uh, uh, was a high risk patient, so usually the patient. Uh, uh, um, uh, 
has uh, a TE for the monitoring. So it's very easy for uh, a, a team uh, with TE to, to check everything. Okay, thank you. That, 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 that's good, the, the point. There is another more question. Do you have experience with position of Intella in the pre-op surgery? The op um, yes, uh, we have... Uh, uh, a small experience uh, around uh, five or six patients with uh, very high risk uh, uh, for the surgery. It was patient who uh, underrate uh, mitral valve uh, replacement and uh, the team proposed to, to put the impella in preoperative uh, uh, period or just uh, before the reading of the CBB. And we could observe very nice uh, result, but it's only observational uh, study and including only five or six patients. But I know that all the teams uh, propose this uh, approach for very high risk patients with, for example, 20 or 25 percent of uh, ejection fraction. Um, I hope that with this webinar we've been able to provide you with a good overview uh, how ECMO can be used and should be used, which are the, the, the caveats, and as well that uh, ECMO should be seen within a whole arsenal uh, of, of therapies. And uh, I think that basically Dr. Antonio Rubino from, uh, from uh, Papua, the, the UK, he explained very clearly the basics of uh, ECMO treatment. Um, he addressed as well the, the risks and, uh, and, and the complications which are involved, which are really, really vast. And actually, uh, he was mentioning, like other lectures, that the outcome after post cardiac cardiogenic shock in patients who need the ECMO is uh, not very good. And in the best centers, it approaches uh, somewhat about one third of the patients who recover from ECMO. However, this is very dependent, as he mentioned, upon a very good selection. He insisted on the fact that such selection should be a multidisciplinary decision. And I think uh, his final words was actually that, that every patient is different, ECMO is complex, and uh, for every case we need a tailored approach in order to have the most benefit and avoid uh, the side effects. Next was uh, Dr. Isabelle Michaud from, from Brussels, Belgium, who gave us an overview of uh, post cardiotomic cardiogenic shock. She um, mentioned um, the heterogenic uh, literature, which is uh, very difficult uh, to interpret and to provide evidence what's the best treatment in this uh, situation. She reviewed uh, the use of balloon pump, which should not be dismissed lightly and it's probably very valuable, uh, particularly in the preoperative, session, uh, the preoperative setting in these uh, high-risk patients, um, as well as in uh, combination with ECMO in order to provide afterload reduction, which may be a major problem with, uh, with ECMO. She reviewed as well uh, some, some of the anatropics. Uh, she pointed out to the risk of very high doses of epinephrine, uh, she mentioned the, the let's say, somewhat um, care we should uh, have with the use of millerinone. Um, she uh, reviewed as well levisimendan, which was very promising, but still waits to find its niche where it is most useful. Again, here preoperative setting, it's probably the best, the best uh, <clears throat> way to use it. Next was Dr. Watara from Paris, who uh, explained that next to ECMO, we may uh, use other treatments, other assist treatments like uh, ventricular assisted five speed, uh, left ventricle, right ventricle, or bi biventricle. And this should be seen more as, let's say, a second approach after the ECMO in order to, to bridge uh, to, to something else, uh, maybe an assist device for uh, when you're lucky in heart transplant. Uh, he reviewed as well the, the Impella device, which is very promising, particularly we know the high flow uh, variants, uh, as well the, the, the Impella which you can insert surgically uh, from within the apex or to sternotomy, uh, as well as the new uh, upcoming uh, Impella for right ventricular assist. All very promising, but still uh, very early 
early phase studies. <coughs> um, Dr. Priya Menon from uh, Leipzig gave us a, a good review how the guidance should be used in the insertion of ECMO cannula, uh, balloon pump, as well as uh, impella. Uh, not only insertion, but as well in the daily follow-up of this patient, TUE guidance is of paramount importance. Uh, finally, Dr. Philippe Godard, he gave us the viewpoint from uh, the intensive care to these patients. And with that, I think, uh, I hope we have given you a good overview, which will allow you to uh, make better use of ECMO in, in your patients. I really hope that uh, you enjoyed this, this webinar. Uh, I wish you a very good evening. Thank you for your participation from wherever you are listening or looking. And uh, now I'm giving the final words uh, from this webinar to uh, Dr. Dr. Godard. Dr. Godard, the webinar is yours. Thank you, Peter, for this point-by-point uh, -point wrapping up. Now, I think uh, we are good for now. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it was a pleasure being with you today. As a take home message, I would like to say that uh, VA ECMO for refractory postcardiotomy cardiogenic shock needs to be started early when inotropes don't work and needs to be customized to patient and surgical situation, including a combination with intraortic balloon pump. Less ventricular unloading is mandatory and minimal pulmonary flow needs to be preserved as much as possible. Anticipation of prevention is a key point for the use of balloon pump and probably levosimandan in selected cases. Selective left ventricular support or combined ventricular assist devices are promising options. TEE is absolutely essential for the indication, the setting up, the follow-up, and the winning of mechanical secondary support. It's time now to close the session. On behalf of uh, all speakers and moderators, I would like to highlight and emphasize the value of Professor Mohamed El Tahan as uh, EDUCOM chair being instrumental in organizing this IACTA webinar. This is my pleasure to introduce Professor Fabio Garaccino, the president of IACTA, to conclude and close the webinar. Please, Fabio. Uh, good evening, everybody, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, due to unpredictable technical uh, problems, I'm not able to uh, lively connect with you at the end of this webinar, but I really, really wanted to thank all the, peoples, the people who made this webinar uh, happen. Uh, so, it is a pleasure for me, on behalf of the ACTA Board of Directors, to thank the speakers who did an excellent job and we are very grateful to them for their commitment to ACTA. We know how hard it was to prepare the lectures, to go through the rehearsals with Professor El Tahan in order to make everything uh, work fine tonight. So, many, many thanks to all the excellent speakers. Uh, a special thank to the ICU subcommittee. Uh, all these educational activities are prompted by our subcommittees, are supported by the subcommittees, and 
we are very, very uh, grateful to our colleagues and friends in the subcommittees for supporting these uh, educational activities. Um, I really wish to thank, to thank a lot the sponsors who supported us and allowed us to uh, make this webinar uh, possible. Um, so I really thank Abiomed and Orion Pharma for their uh, support. Uh, we are really grateful they are supporting not only this webinar, but in general, our educational activities and scientific activities. And so we consider them really part of this team producing education and scientific uh, um, activities for our community. Um, let me thank the team from Rome, uh, the team from AIM, our association management team. They did an excellent job in supporting and backing all this activity. And last but not least, as we used to say, a great, great thank to the Educational Committee of IACTA and to, the, to, his, to its chair, Professor Mohamed El Tahan, who is so active and is supporting, promoting and managing all these uh, interesting educational activity. Many, many thanks. Um, well, we apologize for not addressing all the answers. This is due to the limit of time. But the ACTA will publish all the answers uh, by speakers on the website. So before saying goodbye, I really wish to remind all of you that the ACTA, the next, sorry, the next ACTA webinar will be in March 2020. So keep on following us. Thank you so much for attending and joining. Bye-bye.